So welcome back. Now, today what I want to talk about is a tweet that Donald Trump put out last night, or it could have been this morning. It doesn't matter. It's insane. It's chaotic. And the, the thing about this is when you hear it, just listen to what he's saying. And he's accusing everybody else of doing exactly what he did in the last election. So he said this morning, oh, and before I begin, I want to say this. We've got Miss Jenny with us. Say hello, Miss Jenny. Hello. And Jenny represents the uh, 40 to 45-year-old age group, and she's also known as, uh, according to J.D. Vance, she fits the definition of cat lady. <laughs> right? That's correct. Uh, because Jenny is, uh, she has two cats, and she's single. And by every virtue, I think you, you meet the metric of being a cat lady, wouldn't yeah. you say? Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I mean, J.D. Vance hit it right on the mark. I think he's he's got your picture on his <laughs> death. <laughs> Miss Jenny the Cat Lady. So here's what Donald Trump said yesterday. He said, cease and desist. I, together with many attorneys and legal scholars, am watching the sanctity of the 2024 presidential election very closely because I know, better than most, the rampant cheating and skullduggery that has taken place by the Democrats in the 2020 presidential election. It was a disgrace to our nation. Therefore, the 2024 election where votes have just started being cast will be under the closest professional scrutiny. And when I win, he says in caps, those people that cheated will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, which will include long-term prison sentences so that this depravity of justice does not happen again. We cannot let our country further devolve into a third world nation, and we won't, he says. Please beware that this legal exposure extends to lawyers, political operatives, that would be me, donors, illegal voters, and corrupt election officials. Those involved in unscrupulous behavior will be sought out, caught, and prosecuted at levels, unfortunately, never before seen in our country. Now, the, the thing that's really strange about that is that, and chaotic, in, in its typical Trump playbook, because he's accusing everyone else of doing exactly what he has done. And by that, I mean, you could just go out anywhere and you can Google this, but he's done things like pressuring state officials. He personally called Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, urging him to find the 11,780 votes. They filed over 60, Trump's legal team has filed over 60 lawsuits challenging the results in various states. Almost all of these were rejected. He's pressured the Department of Justice. Trump tried to convince the DOJ to publicly declare the election as fraudulent, despite obviously a lack of any evidence. Former acting Deputy, Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue testified that Trump said, just say the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me. Donald Trump also had plans to seize voting machines. Uh, reports are suggesting that in the last election, Donald Trump considered issuing an executive order to have the military or Department of Homeland Security seize voting machines in key battleground states. And of course, the big icing on the cake was he encouraged the January 6th attack. In addition to that, he also formulated this plan to have fake electors try to steal the election in a scheme that Vice President Pence didn't go along with. So, I mean, it's uh, right out of the playbook for Donald Trump to suggest that everybody else is doing the stealing, when in reality, he's the one that's actually doing all of the stealing. And to me, um, I think this is, uh, this, this is actually hitting on a level of chaos that portends what might actually happen if Donald Trump gets elected again. Um, I mean, we're talking chaos here. What do you think, Jenny? I mean, if Donald Trump gets reelected, his whole notion here that please be aware that he's he's warning people that this legal exposure extends to lawyers, political operatives, donors, illegal voters, and corrupt election officials. And he's saying that these those involved in unscrupulous behavior. Now, what do you think he's what is unscrupulous behavior to him? I think it's anybody that that he doesn't like. It's basically yeah, any, anybody that doesn't, you know, follow him or is his insane yeah. ideology. 
So there really is no definition of what is unscrupulous behavior. It's pretty much anybody that Donald Trump doesn't like. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty wide net that he's casting, and it's really a threat that he's making. It's a threat that he's making, and at the same time, he's got people like Elon Musk that are coming out and saying, you, if you're going to cheat, you better cheat good, Democrats, because if he gets elected, he is going to prosecute you. I don't know. Did you know that Elon Musk came out and said that this morning? No, Jane? I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. So even Elon, people like Elon Musk, who are, you know, titans of industry, let's say, you know, although he makes the most ugly Tesla truck that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I mean, so-called titans of industry. These people, people like Elon Musk are falling behind Donald Trump and saying, you know, if you're going to cheat, you better cheat big because he's going to lock you up. So, I mean, the whole thing is sort of like a uh, a mind bend that Donald Trump is trying to do on people right now uh, in terms of trying to win this election. And I think we got to take him at his word. When he says that he is going to come after people, donors, illegal voters, why would he come after donors, for God's sakes? What, what has a donor done against Donald Trump? I mean, this is insane. And he's I, an idiot. He is. I, I don't think people quite... They hear Donald Trump speak, but they just kind of, they, they think that the message behind the man is, is more important. You know, he, like he can't even stay on course when asked a question, for example, um, child care. He yeah. goes into uh, how he's going to tax other countries for bringing goods into the United States, which means higher grocery bills, et cetera. Yeah, he starts so. off with a question that's related to child care, and he somehow ends up talking about, um, you know, these tariffs, which we all know that when you charge something, when you put a tariff on something that's coming in at the border, how is that not going to make that product more expensive for your everyday consumer? I mean, so the man, he, he can't carry a train of thought to begin with. And but, don't even get me started on women's uh, health. No, I mean, he's, and then the whole time saying he's actually pro-women's health by the same, and then he's taking it away with his left hand, and then he's out there kind of polishing and playing the accordion at the microphone telling people all about how he's going to protect women's health, the best thing ever. But this whole thing, why do you think that Elon Musk, I mean, let's think about this. Why would Elon Musk actually get behind somebody like Donald Trump? Because I just rambled off a litany of reasons how Donald Trump is actually trying to steal this election. Why would somebody like Elon Musk try to get behind that? And the, the only reason I can think of is obviously that Elon Musk is trying to get a position in the Trump administration. For some reason, and you can see by his tweets, Elon Musk has been moving more politically towards Donald Trump. And for him to understand, obviously... All of the corruption that's been going on with Donald Trump in the past election. Find the votes, the fake elector scheme, January 6th, all of this stuff. And then at the end of the day, say something like, you know what? You better cheat big, Democrats, because if Donald Trump gets elected, you're all going to jail. So, I mean, it, it really is just a, uh, it's a chaos of, of, of greed, you know, the, to have somebody like Elon Musk just kind of pandering to Donald Trump just because... He wants to get in office, and God knows what his long-term intentions yeah. are. But, I mean, this this election, on so many levels, folks, this is the last parade for Donald Trump, isn't it? Pretty much. This is it. If he doesn't win this election... He's he's getting too old, no, you know, and people are tired of his shit. Yeah, this is the, the last hurrah for Donald Trump. So we've we've got to take stuff like this that he's saying at his word. When he says he's going to lock up, Lawyers, political operatives, donors, illegal voters, which, by the way, they already lock up illegal voters. And I think we found more illegal voters on the Republican side in the last election than we did on the Democrat side. Yeah. There's always going to be something like that going on. But the, the law locks them up as it stands. So illegal voters aren't the problem. But, folks, I think we've got to understand that Donald Trump is looking to turn the United States into a Venezuela. This is the kind of country that he wants. And if you notice in the news here recently that Venezuela had that election, obviously, you know, went haywire, Maduro, uh, knived that whole thing. But the problem is that you get somebody like Donald Trump in there, they don't leave. 
they just build power once they get in and then all you'll never get them out right i mean it's it's what autocrats do we've got to understand this folks that this is the last hurrah for donald trump and we've got to we've got to push we've got to ensure that we can take this thing across the finish line and we got to get out there and vote we Absolutely. have to vote we do have to vote so folks we're going to be focusing on this in the days ahead in getting to this election um and just just what donald trump is doing and he's going to become more unhinged every day every minute because he's he understands the criticality of him winning this election just because of his legal trouble and the closer that we get the more unhinged the more chaotic and the more insane you're going to see Donald Trump get. But we're looking forward to this, aren't we, Jenny? We're looking forward to the debate coming up on Tuesday night. Yes, definitely. So folks, tune in and tune out Donald Trump, and somehow we're going to pull this thing over the finish line. Till next time.